Hey folks, it's Ben. We're here with our 1994 Buick Regal. Ugh. The customer states, that's my son, <laughs> that the voltmeter isn't doing what it's supposed to do. And by that, I mean it's showing it's low, which means something might be up with the gauge or uh, something could actually be up with the alternator, tough to say. Uh, but that being said, it hasn't had any symptoms. Like it starts fine and runs fine and all the good stuff. So we got our voltometer and let's go ahead and give it a kick over and see where it sits. Let's turn that off. <laughs> and right out of the gate it says, I'm not starting for you, sucker. It's definitely be dinging at me loud enough though, jeez. Nobody home. So we gotta see why the voltmeter should be active and it's showing under eight volts. So my guess is the alternator might be a little dead. Can I try? So let's go ahead and pop the hood on this thing, which actually requires pulling your <laughs> vice grips. And uh, let's measure the battery voltage. The easy way to test this is to put a volt gauge, and I still have my analog one hooked up to my cables. I do have a digital one, but I just happen to have this one out. And just, just go across the volt, the battery here, as you look at nothing. <laughs> Stick that one on there. And this one on the negative side, and what do we have? Now we're showing 11 volts on the battery when with no load on it except for, oh, I think I took that out, except for the door being open so we have internal power draw which is killing it. So let's go ahead and grab the old battery charger. We'll stick it on there a little bit, see if we can boost it up and we'll take a look at the Bonneville and uh, just foreshadowing, <laughs> see if it'll fit here on the serpentine belt system. That's a series two V6, but maybe they're close enough. We'll find out here in a sec. So one little boost later, we are up and running and we are definitely showing not 13 volts. So whatever voltage we put in that battery is now showing on the gauge. So let's go see what's going on outside here. I have camera monkeys. Hello camera monkey. That's hot, I know. Now see, here we are showing a gauge issue because we are charging at we're almost at 15 volts, we're at 14 volts coming off the alternator right now. So what's the gauge read right now, Duncan? See, it is putting on proper voltage. Below 13? Now yeah, see, it's got power. Like the battery's getting charged. But something's amiss somewhere because that gauge is showing on. Trying to pull the alternator up there. Hey. What is it? It's a wire. Grab it. Is it cold? No. Oh. Oh. And when you wiggled it, the gauge went up to 13. Yeah, it did it. Yeah. Power sensor. Depending on the user gates. Orange ABS. The, the ABS lights on. 
So this wire is getting way too warm for what it's doing and uh, it was broken before. That probably wasn't me, but who knows. So we gotta fix that somehow. That's probably where all our electrical issues are coming from. Okay, so everything else is pretend good. Pretend we didn't see that. And uh, let's drag it over to the garage because I don't like working over here. So we come back to our lovely little box here now. Earlier this winter time to get this car on the road, it's usually attached with two little fake screws right here. Uh, the, the car when we bought it was configured in an awful manner in terms of it had this positive and it goes straight off the battery on this post here. And then they had a nut that has uh, wiped out the thread so it was unable to move and had thread material locked in it so it actually couldn't come out. And then they had some wires holding this on here. And what's happening is, is so much corrosion is getting into the area here that it's, it's heating up the wires and just a lot of hotness is going on here. It's not cool. So uh, when I originally corrected it, what I had done is actually just taken a shim and crammed it underneath this connector here. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I, connect, I crammed it on top, but between the nut, which wouldn't come out so that this was firmly pushed down on the, the post. And then I came in with another nut and came down and pushed down on the uh, nut that wouldn't move and just compacted the whole thing using the threads. And that seemed to work out just fine. But what we're getting is that all these surfaces are getting corrosion on them and it's causing resistance and ultimately not doing good things for us. So what we needed to do was, in one of the several trips to the picket yards, gotten a better block <laughs> but we're not there so uh, we have to fix with what we have so what i have done is uh so all this connection is it's a post and then there's another there's a plate here and this goes back to the fuses so it's the hot side of the fuses and then we have another bolt that actually comes in here and attaches the plate to the post so this plate goes to this big post here with one bolt and then there's something coming off that as well so all these things are very corroded. As you can see, they're not exactly super clean. So I've got my Dremel with a wire wheel and we're just coming in and cleaning up all these surfaces uh, on top here. And uh, hopefully I'm gonna just reassemble, to be honest with you, initially. We'll uh, see if we can get that plate back a little bit, see if we can get a little emery in there, clean up all the surfaces, this connector, whatever it is, we'll clean it up as well. Uh, our threads are obviously kind of clean. This bolt's good to go. We're going to stick it all back together again and see if that uh, remedies it until we actually get back and, and get a new block here. Although, that being said, these blocks are not fun to change. They're not gross either. But we have a lot of disconnecting and reconnecting to do because there's some switches and relays in here. So it will be a little bit of a pain, but you can see where there's the bus bars on one side where the fuses connect. So that's where we're having, I believe, a majority of our issue is just getting power to these devices. And that's why probably his ABS lights on is because of, oh, that clips right on the fender. Clever boys, very clever. Um, that's where a bulk of our issues are. So we'll get everything cleaned up, put back together again, and then we'll give it a old test fire and see how it goes. So this is what I've ended up with. <clears throat> Oops. Oh. Because the pole here so stripped and my nut is probably not the right threads anyway focus on that thanks um i ended up putting a essentially a small bit of copper pipe here so we clean the base surface we clean the connection on both sides we copper pipes already clean we put this on there we'll see how corrosion does again but at least it's disassemblable uh, then we have our stud here which we also cleaned uh the plate and the, the screw essentially and uh the connector that's on it so it's really in there too now and so it's it's actually firmed everything up quite a bit this will have some play in it but i still want to get a replacement because this this looks bad <laughs> uh, what we're actually surfacing in the area here is the abs module uh, we don't have fog lamps we have a horn the abs the headlamps ignition switch one ignition switch two which is where i'm guessing we were having our our power issues because not the fog lamps it doesn't even have a thing park lamps and horn so um <clears throat> now with that we get the battery reconnected uh still have our washer pump mia because we'll wait till we figure this thing out but let's go ahead and see if we'll start up uh 
Lots of dinging again. Looking great on the voltage side. Better than when it was running. Three, two, one, contact. All the volts. Just about. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Service engine tune light. Oh, well. Uh, that comes on and off. I don't know what it is yet, but we'll figure that out later. So there, I was thinking maybe I was down an alternator, but really I was actually just down some poor wiring. <laughs> so uh, instead of wasting a half an hour swapping out an alternator and some bucks, I wasted two hours messing around getting this sorted out. But I'm very happy with this installation. It's much better than it was. I don't even need this piece of crap anymore. So we have a piece of copper pipe in there. That makes sense. So I'll throw the pump back on, which is actually laying around here somewhere, and put it back in the tank for the windshield washer fluid. And it just kind of lives here, because that's where the battery is, and really that's the most important part of the whole mix. So if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them. Subscribe to my channel, Turbo 231. Here it is. Subscribe to Tur Turbo 231 for uh, more awesome videos on this Buick. There you go and 94 with the series 1 3.8 just like the awesome van over there uh and we'll catch you next time